Greetings urban adventurers and developers. Today we're reaching new aids as we develop a simple but lovely airplane flying game in React and 3JS. The concept is straightforward, WASD to move, shift to activate, hyperspeed, and a lot of rings to catch as we soar through these undiscovered skies. I'll leave links in the description for the repo of the project and a page where you can try it live on your browser. And there's lots of new concepts that we haven't touched upon in my previous videos, and I hope you'll enjoy this mod project as much as I did. So let's get started with the tutorial. Usually in my tutorials, we dive immediately in the code base with VS Code, but a lot of you have been interested in knowing a bit more about the Blender process when creating the 3D environments of my videos. So this time I'll quickly glance over how I made this small map with geometry nodes, and I'll try to be quick since most of you are likely more interested in the code itself, so let's start this overview by creating a new Blender project. Keep in mind that this is not a Blender tutorial, so just skim through the ideas without expanding too much on the Blender specific concepts, and for this project it all starts with a simple plane to which we assign the geometry node. To start we'll ignore the group input and create a grid node that contains 256 vertices for each side of the plane. This will create a new plane that is subdivided with enough vertices to show all the details of our mountains, which we're going to create next with a noise texture. And once we set up the noise texture, this will be effectively the components that will create the appearance of our mountain. We can play with the scale parameter, make it appear very rough, or detail to make it smoother, or the W component that just moves the texture around until we can find a good spot for our mountains, like this one. Multiply add is being used because by default, the texture would look like this. So it's being placed upward and it's not as tall as we would like it to be. So we're multiplying the result by two to make the mountains taller. And then as an addend, I'm using a negative number to place it down again. Set position is usually used to modify the position of the vertices of a specific geometry. And in this case, we are altering all the vertices of the grid geometry by adding an offset that will increase the eight of each of these vertices to recreate our mountains. Great, now we can move on to the next step where I have duplicated this mesh in case I want to change these nodes later. And on this one, I'll just apply the geometry nodes and I'll keep on working on it as if it was a normal Blender mesh. In sculpt mode, I'm using the flatten tool to smooth out some sections of the landscape. And once we're happy with the result, we'll switch to weight paint mode and we'll start to increase the weight of some of these faces. And these weights will be used to randomly spawn the trees on our object. These are the weights I'll be using. And now to spawn some trees onto this mesh, we'll need to create a new object and add a geometry node on top of it. I've made a copy of the plane mesh then called the trees. And since this is a copy of the landscape, we can use a geometry node to distribute a random set of points on top of the faces of the landscape. And on each one of these points, we can add an instance of a cone. And we can play with these values to change the eight of our trees or their size. But if you do play with the density slider, you'll notice that all of the trees are being uniformly added to the mesh, which is not exactly what we want because we have created a weight paint vertex group to this mesh that we would like to use instead of randomly distributing points on the faces of the landscape. And selecting the weight paint vertex group as the density factor is as easy as dragging this control onto the group input and then selecting point group into the drop down of the geometry node input. And that's it. I'm really happy with what I see. So I'll just realize the instances and then apply the geometry node. And if you follow along, this should be the resulting render if you apply an environment map. And I've also included three simple planes with a refractive material to simulate water. And now that we have all these pieces together, I can share the material setup for the landscape. I'll omit the material for the trees because that's a simple diffuse green BRDF and there's nothing exciting to share on that front. And this is the setup for the material of the landscape. I have two different sets of textures, one for the rocky part of the mountain and one for the grass. They are both connected to two different principled BSDFs. And this side of the shader editor is the one that determines which texture we're going to pick. So I'm basically picking the normal of the geometry, getting the Z value of the normal. So in Blender, the Z value is the equivalent of the Y axis at 3JS. And the Y value essentially is going to be used to determine which shader we're going to pick 
from these two principal BSDFs. In practice, normals that are laid out horizontally, like this one, will for the most part take the rocky textures, whereas all the normals that point upward, like this one, will end up using the grass texture. And after adding a bunch of emissive dots around the map, we finally get to the end of the blender process. I'm very confident that there are 50 million better ways of achieving the same result. I am not a, an expert in 3D modeling, so take this whole process with a grain of salt and always keep an eye out for Blender specific tutorials in case you want to embark on the modeling journey. But this is pretty much it. From now on, it's easy to bake the materials into something that you can export as a GLB file, so leave that part out and move on to the coding phase. Finally, please let me know if you found the Blender process interesting or if you think that I should skip this part for my future videos and just focus on the coding aspects of this project. Before we jump in VS Code, here's the repo of the project. It will be public as soon as I release the video and it will also contain a branch for each episode of the series. On this repo, you can also download the models and the textures that I'm using. And as always, I'll leave all these links in the description of the video. The setup is simple. We'll use Vite to kickstart the app and just follow the prompts and create a JavaScript and React project and then install the dependencies to complete the setup. We'll then need to install these packages and please make sure you're using the exact versions that I'm showing on video since newer releases of these libraries often have important changes that can break the app. I'll also add these commands in the description. You also need to download the models and textures that I'm using and again you can find these on the repo of the project and I'll share a link in the description of the video for you to download these files. And I've also deleted everything from the source folder I just left index.css, it's just super simple CSS that is centering the canvas and making sure that it takes the entirety of the screen. Then we have main.jsx, which is just injecting the React tree fabric canvas and making sure that it can also cast shadows. And then we have an empty app component where we're going to inject all of the 3D elements of the scene. Let's start with some familiar elements like the default camera and a set of controls that will give us the option of rotating around the scene. Then we have an environment map with the background property set to false, which in practice means that this environment map will be used in the materials of all the meshes of our scene, but it won't be used as a background. For that, we'll create a new component called sphere env. This component is simply creating a sphere that will be rendered with a texture that is going to be used as the background of our scene. And we're going to only render the back facing sides of the sphere. This is a well-known option in computer graphics where you can render all the sides of an object that are facing away from your viewpoint. And in practice, this will give the impression that we are inside the sphere. We're giving the sphere geometry a larger radius of 60 units because it will have to contain the entire scene. And these two parameters control how many triangles will be used to create the sphere. This way of creating a background is somewhat unorthodox because in theory you could get out of the sphere as we fly with the airplane, but it comes in handy when trying to give a sense of speed when the camera moves quickly across the scene. And if you run npm run dev you'll see that we are indeed inside of a sphere that is acting as our background. Before we finish the episode, let's take a quick look at the landscape component and a directional light that will act as the sun of the scene. The landscape component has been in part created by gltf to jsx. This is a utility command that can take a GLB file and create a JSX component that references all the nodes of the 3D object. And it's super useful because it prevents you the pain of having to create all of these meshes yourself. Great, now we have a working landscape. However, some parts will require small tweaks like the material of these small lights. And we're also missing the lakes, which we'll create next. We'll need two new materials, one for the lights and one for the water. The material for the light is simply using an emissive shader and we've seen the water material in a lot of my other videos. In practice it's a type of material that can cast reflections but as the downside that the entire scene needs to be re-rendered each time we're using this material. So we'll have to use it sparingly. Having three lakes with this material is already going to be quite expensive. At the end of the component I've added all the lakes and they're all using the water material and finally, I'm assigning the lights material to the lights geometry, and then I'm using this use effect to slightly edit the existing materials of the landscape and the trees. For the trees, I'm changing their colors and also editing the environment map intensity, which I'm also doing for the landscape. The environment map intensity is a property that controls how strongly an object is going to be illuminated by the environment map. 
And that's it, the landscape is ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this first part of the project, and as always remember that all forms of feedback are greatly appreciated and are used to improve the quality of the channel. In the next part, we'll take a look at the airplane component and we'll start to build the controls for the flight. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.